Welcome, race fans. The Derby's done, meaning another big race is around the corner. Its coveted pole is up for grabs. The IRL's wide open. Even Jack Miller DDS is seeking a brush with Indy Mystique. A two-time Indy 500 winner finds himself in Rio. Racing's racing, and, and uh, I feel happy about being in, in Brazil. Winston Cup has a makeup date in Talladega. John Andretti on the pole for the second time in his career. But history runs in Earnhardt's favor. He's led eight straight races there. Villeneuve's dominant pole position may have run its course. Much racing coming your way. The NHRA, the trucks, the bush, everything. RPM tonight, next. Spanning the globe to bring you a constant variety in sport. Actually, we just did a little more than check the racing schedule, and there's a truckload, including trucks and the Indy Pole and Bush and NHRA and Formula One and CART. It's all coming up on RPM tonight, and that's us. We want to warn our affiliates we may be going long. We open with a do-over, and I don't mean the top of this show. This is more than any one reason, maybe the real reason, NASCAR builds open weekends into the calendar. Two weeks ago, rain washed out the Winston 500. The skies were clear Saturday. The drivers flooring it into the great wide open at Talladega. And away they go. Jeff Gordon, he's after a racing in tie with Mark Martin and Jimmy Spencer. Three wide, four wide, almost five wide at times, all in a buck 90. Carry the body start way back in 36, but he's after it up to 11th spot in the first 10 laps. Lap 18. Dale Earnhardt started fourth, and he's into the lead for the first time since Daytona. Fans like seeing Earnhardt, a winner at Talladega, seven times. Meanwhile, the points leader, Dale Jarrett, trouble, dropped the cylinder, falls from 9th to 30th, and they were still going green at 30 laps. No caution. Now John Andretti out there. Oh, look, look at Andretti. Woo, did he get a run on? Wow. And Earnhardt, it seems like all of a sudden saw him and said, whoa, go ahead. Sites of analysis by Benny Parsons. Andretti led 19 laps, 72 laps to go. The king of the restrictor plate racing. Not going well. Sterling Marlin on the backside. Team put a lot of money into this one. Still green, 50 to go. Now 48 to go. Mark Martin, a winner last week out in California after Earnhardt and into the lead. How bad did they want it? Check it out in this next scene here. Coming out of the pits, the 99 car. We circled him because we have fancy editing equipment. Jeff Burton. Last year's Sunday driver, he's all over the place on this Saturday, flying to the inside, cutting people off. Now he's down on the apron as they fly out onto the track. He's still down, though, not on the track. He wants the lead, and he got it. He almost bumps into John Andretti, but not enough. They don't touch. Burton gets the lead, but then he fall back and out of the draft. Dale Jarrett, out of gas with 30 to go. Ten laps to go, still no caution. Now nine to go, and Mark Martin. Trying to hold off Earnhardt. Earnhardt chasing him from behind, going in, then out. But Mark Martin dodges him. And Earnhardt started the day with 58 second-place finishes. Make it 59, because Mark Martin in front. The big chain of cars, one, two, three, four, five, flying by. But it's Mark Martin after going winless since late in the 1995 season. He's broken up that streak. In fact, he's won two straight now. Dale Earnhardt was close. Second is his best finish of the season. Bobby Labonte was next. The pole sitter, John Andretti, fourth. And then Jeff Gordon. Now to the winner for the second week running with the doctor, Jerry Punch. Woo, look out, Charlotte, man. Here we come. Uh, this week, Matt and Arlene got to be here. We had to do it with them here. They weren't there last week. And to give Valvoline Cummins, Bugles, and Bosch, and Ford, and Goodyear, and all these folks a little bit to brag about. Uh, no fluke last week. We had a good race car today. and I couldn't believe that we stayed in front there. I just knew something was going to go wrong. But... Uh, it worked out. Well, come on in, Matt and Arlene. Come on in and enjoy this victory. How about your daddy, Matt? Hey, we talked about happy hour yesterday when you went out with a three car, and a couple of times you tried to hold him off, and he came zipping by you. We were wondering if you were going to do it again today. Well, he had a real fast car. Uh, I was pretty sure that uh, he could do something with us. He actually got his best runs right when he got in second place. He about had me a couple of times. Then after that, it settled in, and I, I knew if I did the right things on the racetrack, I'd keep him behind me then. How about it? 42 race winless streak ends at Sonoma. Now two in a row for Mark Martin as Mark, Matt, and Arlene Martin celebrating victory lane, having won the 28th Winston 500. 
Dr. Punch, thank you. Check this out. Over the first ra six races, Mark Martin was pretty much traffic. His average finish, 17th. His best finish, just sixth place. Now check out the past four races. Two wins in the most recent two events and four top fives. Now other card chatter, starting with the fifth place runner, Jeff Gordon. Even when I was at second, I don't know if I could have got by Mark. I mean, uh, if Earnhardt couldn't have got by him, it would have been tough for me to get by him because Earnhardt had uh, a strong car and he could he could pull out. Once you get up front and you're leading, boy, it's uh, it's hard to do anything with him. So, uh, uh, you know, Mark had the lead and, and uh, he was really in the driver's seat. Bobby was trying to help me all he could, but we just couldn't muster enough. Uh, you know, Mark had the car right today, uh, Jack and the guys. So. You know, I, I got to hand it to Larry McReynolds and all my guys. They, they did a great job. Everything worked great. So the engine ran great. So we had a good day and good second. It's about time we had some good re results. With a little bit of help, I think um, maybe I'd have my first Winston Cup win. But, but you know, that, that's all right. I hear there's a Talladega jinx, so we'll go out here with fourth and try win Charlotte. All right. Terry Labonte, he ran six in this race in the Corn Flakes car, and that takes us the points lead. For Terry Labonte, he is number one. Jimmy Spencer was good to be seventh. Jeff Burton, Johnny Benson, and Ernie Irvin, they finished out the top ten, all of them on the lead lap. It's not just the honor of winning the pole for the 81st running of the Indy 500. It's not just the $100,000 that goes with it, a cash prize. The pole winner receives a fancy custom van. Is this a great country or what? Well, Marlo Klain is standing next to the guy who gets the hundred grand, who gets the pole, who gets the van. He's Ari Leyendek. Marlo? Well, Ari Lionsdake, there are two ways to win here in the month of May. One is May 25th for the race, but it seems that you have won round one pole. Well, we're uh, very happy at Treadway Racing to, to win the pole position for this race because, uh, you know, this is a great race, and uh, I've been on the pole here before, and it's uh, about as much excitement the second time around. But, you know, after what happened last year, we really felt that uh, we deserved to get a pole, and uh, I'm very glad we did it. Ari, a lot of the teams were struggling here all week. You guys were the fastest every single day leading up to this yeah i don't see i don't believe really and uh i don't believe in sandbagging i think you need to go out there and go as fast as you can with the with the stuff that you have with the equipment just to see what the limit of the equipment is on, on several laps because to, to duplicate it is not very easy and these cars are not so easy to drive so uh, we worked hard today again on the setup with the windy conditions, we had to adjust the car and make a few changes, and I'm glad we came through. Obviously, the speeds were down from last year, but as of, as far as qualifying, what was the biggest difference for you uh, with the old cars compared to the new cars this year? Uh, basically, getting the tires up to temperature. Uh, that's the big difference between these cars and last year's cars, just because of the lack of downforce that we have with these cars. And it was a challenge for the teams. What do you guys do? Do you lay off at all this week, or what's your plan to prepare for the race? Uh, tomorrow we'll take a day off and give the guys a day off, but uh, we'll be back on Monday running on full tanks and uh, completing the 500 mile run on the engines we have right now. You obviously won in 1990. Earlier in this week you said that your confidence level to win again this year has been really high, and obviously you showed that you guys were the fastest. Can you just touch on that your confidence level is very high going into this race? Well, you know, when you have a good crew like I have, uh, and, and you have uh, a good engineer like I have, it gives you a lot of confidence. Uh, you know, it's not just the driver that needs confidence from his own abilities. If you're confident in your own ability, that's fine. But if you're with a lousy team, you're still not going to, you know, make it work. So I'm really happy with just the whole package I have, the, the team, the car, the engines, everything. So uh, we're looking forward to it. All right, congratulations, sorry. Kenny? All right, Marlo, that was a good interview. Now you're to be interviewed. We have a couple other questions for you. If my SpeedNet online is correct, and I know this just ended here out there in Indianapolis, Tony Stewart just thousands of a point back of getting the pole. How was his run? His run was good. He said that he would like to have made one last adjustment before he went out there because he felt that they, they would have made one last adjustment. He really could have made a better effort at beating Ari. But uh, And we asked him also after he made his qualifying run if he wanted to wave that last that his run off and he said you know i thought about it but larry curry obviously knew what he was doing and he wanted me to stay out there did you get a chance to catch up with robbie gordon or any of his people the, the sabbatic people because he of course skipped the race in talladega to be out there and then didn't fare as well as he would have liked it no he didn't he qualified 12th for this race he blew an engine yesterday so he knew that was going to be his qualifying engine and he didn't think that they really did have a shot before the pole 
after they blew that engine. How about the first IRL Indy 500 champion, Buddy Lazier? How was his day? Well, Buddy Lazier waved off his first qualifying run. He just went out a couple of minutes ago when he qualified 10th. They obviously uh, made that switch this morning that we had talked about all week from the Infinity to the Aurora. They didn't get as much time with the Aurora as they would have liked, and I think that's probably one of the reasons why they waved off that first run, but he did qualify 10th. All right, Marlo, thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time. And right now, let's take a look at the actual qualifying on videotape. Right now, let's take a look at me. No, now here we go. Beautiful day at Indianapolis, I'm told. Early in the qualifying, second run of the day, the rookie Jeff Ward flying around, turns an average speed of 2.14 and change. Good, job. Good enough for the early pull, but it wouldn't last. Following Ward, the fastest dentist in the world, Dr. Jack Miller in the crest car flying around at 2.09 and change. After the first five drivers, there's a three-hour, 20-minute gap where nobody tried to qualify, and we want to know why. Everybody's waiting for the other guy to make a little move and see what's happening, and, and really nobody knows exactly how fast I think their own teams can go, nor what the other guy can do. So everybody liked the other guy to commit first, and I think that's what's going on right now. That's one big microphone. First up after the long break, Ari Leindek. You just heard from him, so he sort of gave it away. Here he goes. He's been fast all week, and he turned into great lap, 218.263 put him on the pole and he would stay right there last year's pole sitter tony stewart had the best time in practice but fell short in today's qualifying he would qualify though in the middle of row one as it stands winston cup driver robbie gordon not as fast but not a terrible day as you heard from marla stay around that's the first day from indianapolis nascar threw pretty much everything they got at us on saturday bush racing from the state of new hampshire coming up next and we'll go out west to washington for pickup trucks coast to coast racing RPM Tonight is being brought to you by Motel 6. The new Motel 6 is renovating across America. Call 1-800-4-MOTEL-6 for reservations. Hi. The trucks ran north by northwest Saturday up in Monroe, Washington. That's not far from Seattle where the folks are so cautious they won't cross the street when it says don't walk even if the vehicle is nowhere to be seen. There's been a lack of caution in Monroe and we mean that in a good way. It's produced the most caution-free racing of any track running trucks. And here we go to see if it was the same once again. There's the king keeping order, watching his driver, Jimmy Hensley. Early in the race, last week's winner, Rich Bickle. He's after Rick Corelli, and he got him on the inside. He got the lead. Meanwhile, watch the Napa car driver. Ron Hornet Jr. signals for Mike Bliss to pass him. We want to know why. Well, here's why. Take a look at one of Hornaday's tires. A line running through. Shouldn't be there. He's in big trouble, and he finished way back in the ninth spot. 143 laps into the race. We counted. We also looked at that tire for a while, didn't we? Here we go. 143 in. Jack Sprague, who, of course, can eat no fat. Passes the leader, Bickle. Sprague won in Phoenix this year. Never won on a short track. Now, now there's trouble! Brandon Burton, a six-car dogpile here. Lance Norris involved. He's into the wall. North car's on fire, Cheech and Chong at the wheel at this point. He didn't know the car was on fire, though. Eventually, he got some assistance, and he's okay, and that's just good fun racing. 35 laps left to go. Bickle going after green. Make that the green car. Make it the green truck. It's not a car. It's a truck, damn it. Sprague's in trouble. Sprague's after him, but it's Sprague coming back to catch Bickle, and Bickle, though, hold not Sprague. It's Bickle in front, wins for the second straight week in a truck, not a car. Although he may have driven a car to the track and it was probably a rental car and we'll look into rental car abuse. The results go this way. Second straight win for Rich Bickle. Jack Sprague, who can eat no fat, came from second. Fourth top five finish in a row for him. Following him were Michael Dawkins, Joe Rutman, and Kenny Irwin. We check out the points in the truck series. Yes, we do. It's Rich Bickle in front. He's got 51 points of separation on Jack Sprague, who, of course, can eat no fat. Mike Bliss. 106 points, tight run there with Ron Hornaday up in fourth, and then Butch Miller, 140 points back. He stands in the five spot. Let's go up to New Hampshire, where seat belts are not required. U.S. Sailor, 200, loud in New Hampshire, under a two-hour rain delay, and away they go. Lap one, you're on board with Mike McLaughlin. They're banging behind him. Steve Park, in a 10 speed, and sends him into the wall. That's trouble. Lap 38, up front now, the battle for the lead. Todd Bodine going after Randall LaJoy, and he got him down on the inside and gets the lead up in New Hampshire. Great driving by LaJoy here. LaJoy, a little bit sideways. 
but he saves it. He remains with it, and he's in good shape to stay on in the race. Lap 62, there is some kind of trouble. Big dog by the 72, Mike Dillon, hit head on by Buckshot Jones, and they're all going sideways and stopped on the track there. Later in the race, Todd Bodine leading. His crew checks it out. They like it. It's raining. It's okay. The leader's pit now under green. So Mike McLaughlin out of the pit, takes the lead. Lap 179, on board again with McLaughlin. Elton Sawyer on the outside. He's going after it. More trouble. Andy Santer. Big net. Christopher's involved in this thing. On board the same crash with Curtis Markham. Look at here. He gets caught up with Jeff Green. And it's a big dog pile of cars going sideways. The restart. Lap 185. The 99 of Glenn Allen. Spinning out after the touch. And he's into the pack now trying to dodge this mess. And a Zamponi out there clearing the ice. The bumper cam of Mike McLaughlin, the same wreck you'll see it right here. Actually, you'll see the interior of a car. You may see cars, that much I know. You will not see trucks in this. The cleanup crew is out there. The final lap, it's Steve Park on the inside of turn one and down the stretch. Park, McLaughlin touch, but Park hangs on. Make that McLaughlin hangs on. Make that me losing my mind. I can read, though, that Mike McLaughlin is the winner. Gets his first win since June 3rd, 1995 at Dover. That's why I was so mixed up. It's because he hadn't won since 1995. It's his second career BGN win. Steve Park continues his hot streak. Saturday, the third straight race in which he finished in one of the top two spots. That we are sure of. Jeff Fuller, Elton Sawyer, and Phil Parsons, they finish up the top five. The BGN points go like this. LaJoy's lead. Just eight points now on Todd Bodine. No name changes in the top four, but Steve Park moves all the way from eighth up to fifth. Dick Trickle had that five spot, but did not race this weekend. So Randall Joy's lead has narrowed just a bit in the Bush series. Stay around, still more of this TV show coming. We're headed to Rio, going after the pole in the kart race, and John Forrest going after a title, and another kind of do-over, kind of a do-over theme show. Hey, a race you can see Sunday on ABC, a first ever kart series poll for Brazilian Mauricio Guzman. He's up front with another homegrown driver, Roberto Moreno, for Sunday's event in Rio. The Letterman guys, Ray Hall and Herta, they line up next. Paul Tracy's coming off a win. He starts on row three. Pennzoil Nationals rained out two weeks ago, and here we go to the finals to make up Pro Stock Mike Matt, Mike Matt Hines, also known as Matt Hines. Takes the overall points lead by winning. Defeats Hector Arena in the finals. Blew him away. Hines now 24 points on John Meyer. Move along to Pro Stock, and it's Warren Johnson looking to get the points lead from Jim Yates. Johnson against his son, Kurt, in the finals, and away they go. And Warren Johnson left the son of the dust. He met three times this year. Warren leading the series 2-1. to one. Top fuel, Gary Selzy. He's after Corey McClendon in the final. And extends his point lead by getting the win here. Selzy clocks it in 4.737. That's 282 miles per hour and change. And the funny cars, and they're hysterical. Chuck Etchell with Cruz Pendergon going at it, and away they go. John Forrest, though, lost to Pendergon in the semifinal. Forrest maintains a sizable lead in the standings, though. It's Etchell the winner. Stay around. We're on our way back to Monaco. We're also on our way back to Indianapolis. Not pictured. Marlo Plain, stand by. We promised Monaco, and here it is. First career pole for Heinz Harold Frenson. And the first race this season without Jack Villeneuve on the pole. Frenson joined by another German driver, the two-time world champ Michael Schumacher. He won this race in 94 and 95. Those were his title years. Villeneuve will be on row two for Sunday's event, seen on ESPN2 in the morning. As we showed you earlier in the show, number one day for Indy, Indy 500 qualifying. I'll spit it out. The IRL event, once again, second year in a row under the IRA rules. And the pole sitter, Ari Leindegg, 100 grand to him for getting there. Tony Stewart, right up close, just did miss winning the pole. And then some folks that are less recognizable, as you see, we go along through 6 through 10. Jim Guthrie up there in the sixth spot, a few miles per hour back of the pole sitter, Ari Leindegg. And our Marlo Plain's been out there all day long. Obviously, Ari Leindijk was a very happy guy today, but there were some other people that had an up and down day, but we will start with the pole sitter, Ari Leindijk. Guys, it seems to take a long time to come up to temperature, so we tried to run when it was warm, you know, at its, at its warmest, and uh, I think it was, so 
That's what we did. We wanted to make one more aero change in the car, and I think we'd have been better. I think we'd have been considerably better. Uh, the car was just stuck with the racetrack, and we could have freed it up a little more. We just ran it on today. I'm pleased to be back. It's nice to be back, and uh, would have liked to be on the front row, but we'll take what we have. Well, you know, we just kept learning. Every lap we're learning, because we just don't have very many laps here, and uh, we made a change to, to go out for qualifying. We figured, well, we'll just use it as a test session, because we just don't know where we're going to be. Let's just put it in the show. The car ran really well earlier on, and we made some changes to it, and it was a little bit too loose. Uh, it was sliding all over the place, but I think we did a very good job. We had two cars in. I'm very proud of what Jeff did this morning. I think we really do. The other rookie has a very hard time beating him for the rookie of the year. And uh, we have first class that have two cars in the top ten so far. So that's a very good, good deal. I wasn't that happy with my car's balance, but uh, it's always good to get qualifying over with in this way. All right, Lion Dyke was the fastest here all week, so it was no surprise that he won the pole, but obviously he was very happy. Kenny, back to you. Marla, you look in there, and there's a dentist that was out there qualifying. I was looking for my old dentist, Dr. Lundberg, but didn't see his name. Was that the biggest surprise of the day? Is there anything else that stands out to you? Well, I think he was the biggest surprise of the day. Um, and as far as tomorrow goes, um, a lot of guys had trouble because it was so cold here, so windy here, and so overcast here yesterday that they had a difficult time finding a setup for today's qualifying. So obviously they had one more day under their belt to get prepared for qualifying tomorrow. All right, Marlo, enjoy that. Thanks for being with us, and we'll see you next time. Stay around. Still more of RPM today coming. Also RPM tonight. We're right back. RPM Tonight is being brought to you by Finish 2001 Car Polish and Formula 2001 Super Protectant for high-tech shine and protection. Be watching RPM Tonight Sunday night on Mother's Day. We're honored to have Martha Nemechek in the driver's seat. Please do attend. You miss John, but we know we have to go on and we know that that's what he wanted us to do. Emotional show coming Sunday night. Martha Nemechek in a special Mother's Day edition of the driver's seat Sunday night, 7 Eastern. Of course, before that, we have RPM today, 1 Eastern. We'll be joined by Derek Bell to discuss Sunday's Grand Prix of Monaco. Terry Labonte was not the winner, but that's not unusual. He only won twice last year when he won the championship. But what is he now? He's the points leader, Terry Labonte, with another good run on Saturday. It was a good run for us today. Uh, starting back where we started, I was really... Uh, I didn't know what to expect. You know, I didn't really know how good our car was going to be, and we just kind of hung in there all day long and uh, were able to get up in the top ten, and we, we were fortunate enough to take the point lead. So it was a good day for us. So there is a new leader, Terry Labonte, last year's season champ, back in front. His teammate, the 1995 Winston Cup champion, Jeff Gordon, 39 points back in second place. The leader going in, Dale Jarrett, has backed off the third spot, but he's only 52 down. Mark Martin with his second straight win. He's followed by Labonte, a different Labonte, Bobby Labonte in fifth. Earnhardt up to sixth place, 257 points back as he goes after title number eight. Jeff Burton is in the seventh spot. Then Ricky Rudd, Michael Waltrip, and Bobby Hamilton in tenth, driving for the king. We're out of time. Mark Martin, the man, once again, two straight wins for him in cup driving. We'll see you Sunday at 1 Eastern on RPM Today.